Claudia, let me start with you. To me, it feels like inflation is going up. My food prices are going up. My airline tickets are going up. But is it transitory? Well, I think the first thing to remember is those prices were so low, right? I mean, if you think about airline prices, the traffic that was going, it was basically incomprehensible. So some of the rise in prices is going to be a reflection of the fact that we, what we have been living is not normal, right? And so in, in some categories, we need to see, we, we need to see that, right? So these businesses can make money and pay their workers. Now, more broadly, like if you look across all consumer spending and the prices, and that was just the news update, right? We are gonna see those numbers come up again we had very low inflation rates, well, well below the 2% that the Fed thinks we need to have a functioning economy and hit their mandate. And we're probably going to see some above that. And again, that's a sign that we are getting back to a healthy economy and people are getting back to work. Now, I agree. We do, I do not want to see a, a, a wage price spiral. I don't, no one, no one wants to see that. But I do think we have to keep a balanced view and not forget what we just lived through over this past year. Okay, but we are throwing an awful lot of money at this economy, Claudia. So let's bring Doug into this conversation. Um, <laughs> Douglas, we are in a situation where fiscal policy is more than overfilling the output hole that has been left by the yeah. pandemic. That money is going to spill out. You are worried. I read in your notes, there's no question uh, it says that 1.9 trillion, the rescue plan, far exceeds any sensible macroeconomic stimulus. When are we going to know? When are we going to know whether this is going to produce transitory inflation or something more sustained? Well, I first want to agree with Claudia on the, the impact of the service sector. That, that is the depressed sector because of the coronavirus. And, and as we defeat the virus, people return to hotels, restaurants, and, and the general leisure and hospitality sector. Those depressed prices are going to go up. And we'll see a transitory piece of inflation out of that no matter what. And that, that'll be a good news piece of uh, inflation. The second thing we'll see is we'll see this, this stimulus package hit. And uh, it will flow into the economy and overheat. But... I don't think it will generate sustained consumer price inflation. I know, for example, former Treasury Secretary Larry Summers is very concerned about that. I don't think that's the big risk. It takes a lot to generate the kind of inflation that the United States and other countries experienced in the late 60s and 70s. You have to run the economy way over uh, uh, heated for a long time. We did it for six years in the late 60s. It was above potential. We got sustained inflation. This is way too big, but it's transitory. And so I think what is most likely to happen is that the money is going to hit. We're still not going to be completely opened up. We're going to be fighting variants of the virus. We're going to be uh, still have cases rising in, in the U.S. and some states. Money will flow into savings accounts. We've seen this before. Savings rate hit 20 percent after the checks in, in December. And then it's going to start looking for some place that has a better yield. And what I expect to have happen is asset price inflation. And that, I think, is the risk this runs. Uh, that you see uh, a spike in some asset prices. You see the Fed trying to figure out whether they have a financial stability problem. Do they need to move? Do they need to remove excess liquidity? Are they going to have to think about moving rates faster than they've, than they've promised markets? That's the risk. And, and that could be a real headwind uh, going into the second half of this year. Claudia, it was interesting. We did call him a few days ago talking about how Jay Powell was like a bizarro Volcker world, right? Where for so long we were trying to tame inflation. And now, of course, we're rooting for it. As we get some of the inflation from the low base effects of a year ago, as you mentioned, what is the pressure on the Fed not to act, not to respond? Right. Well, first, I want to say I am so happy to hear Doug want to pivot this into a conversation about the Fed and financial markets. I think that's the conversation we should be having and not this yep. fantastical view of out, you know, out of control inflation. Now, the Fed and I wrote about this in The New York Times this week. This is the first time in 40 years that the Federal Reserve is treating its maximum employment mandate on par with its price stability mandate. So I get it. Like, this is causing some confusion in markets because, like, who is this Fed? Like, this is not the Arthur Burns Fed. This is not the Volcker Fed. And this is not the Ben Bernanke Fed, right? And I think this is where we... I truly believe the Fed is very credible that they are going to stay the course. I love Governor Brainer talking about resolute patience, right? And But this is uncharted territory. Yep. Markets don't like uncharted territory. 
Claude, let's, OK, let's just pick up on that point. The, the more that the Fed signals that it's happy to be behind the curve, that it is going to try and reach the far corners of the labour market, the more the market is going to worry about inflation. Mike uh, McKee just had a chart uh, showing kind of where the market is pricing now, but the lines are all uh, projecting upwards. How does the Fed avoid the trap of signalling that it wants to be behind the curve, signalling that it wants to help the labour market, and finding a bond market that is surging ahead? How does it avoid that situation? Because if the bond market gets too out of whack, it's going to force the Fed into action. The Fed is doing its job right now. Right? It is not behind the curve. It is that we have nine and a half million fewer workers than before the pandemic. The bond markets, they should really want us to get out of this pandemic and get these people back to work. We're not even talking about marginalized workers. We're just like talking about like you know, almost 10 million workers. So I hear you. I think what I've seen from the Fed, and I am so proud of them, they are working very hard to get the messaging right. You will not have a taper tantrum, right? Like they are not going to make the mistake of pulling stuff out on the fly that people don't understand, especially markets don't understand. I mean, Jay Powell was reading talking points at the press conference when God asked about financial conditions. So I think the Fed is going to hold markets hand through this. Now, if the world changes, the Fed, as it always says, is not on a preset course. They will change, but they will tell us what is happening, what they're seeing, and why they're changing. Doug, on that note, you hear Claudia mention the bond market. And explain to me, because yeah. I get a little confused, how do we have a Fed that wants higher inflation but doesn't want higher long-end yields, i.e. higher, <laughs> tighter financial conditions? Well, it, it, it can't have everything simultaneously. And I think they've done a good job at focusing on the real economy, using the labor market as the primary indicator of the health of the real economy. But in doing so, they run the risk of repeating what has been the 21st century bane for the Fed, and that is some sort of financial instability that produces bad fallout for the real economy. Happened with the dot-com yeah. bubble, happened with the credit bubble. Uh, if they focus on the real economy, and, and only worry about the unemployment rate, uh, I think they run the risk of letting asset markets get out of hand again. So, they step in abruptly, and, and you get bad fallout. That's the risk that we have in the moment. How do they make that transition work? Can they, Claudia thinks they can make that transition work. Can they make it work in your mind? Because going from super low interest rates to normal interest rates without a taper tantrum looks like a really big ask. Just briefly, if you could. So I think it's, it's, it's true they've learned their lesson about uh, consumer price inflation, but they haven't brought into the conversation the importance of financial stability and the trade-off between low unemployment and the potential for financial instability. They need to talk about that. They need to comfort markets that they're not concerned about the, the pricing and, and the pricing is accurate and, and consistent with the expectations. There needs to be a lot more communication on that front. They're talking yeah. about inflation and unemployment missing the, at the financial markets.